Hey everybody, welcome back. Chad with Patriot Astro. A few videos ago, we covered how to configure filter offsets in Nina both manually or using Dark Archon's plugin. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the advanced sequencer combined with filter offsets and a few other things to create highly efficient imaging sequences. By the time you're done watching this video, you should be able to use what you've learned to get more images out of your limited night skies. If you find this video or any of my other videos helpful, please consider subscribing and sharing the information with others. All right, let's dive right in and create some interesting sequences that'll save you time and make sure you end up with all the data you need to create perfect images. All right, let's jump right in. Um, this is gonna require Nina 111. If you're not sure how to get there, if you already have Nina running, you can change in your profile the auto update source to nightly. That'll take you there, or you can simply install it from the ground up as the nightly version. You can see I'm in 111 nightly version 109, which is the most recent. We're gonna go into the sequencer and I'm gonna start with the basic sequencer just to level set everyone that's at 110 or 111. And a very typical LRGB sequence would probably look something like this, at least for the meat of the imaging component. In this case, we are going to uh, set this up as 120 60 second exposures of each L, R, G, and B. So I'm assuming a mono camera at this point, just for this example. Now here I've set it up to do the 120 60 second exposures of the luminance. Now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that out and for each one I'm going to set the appropriate filter. So now I've got 120 of each of the four filter types. So fundamentally it's a eight hour sequence, right? So there's two hours of each filter. Now of course we're going to turn on guiding, we're going to slew to the target. We're going to center with plate solving. From an autofocus perspective, we always need to autofocus on start, and we're going to autofocus on filter change. We know that filters are pieces of glass that will modify the focal point. And I'm also going to have the system automatically refocus if we have an HFR increase. And I'm not going to talk about those percentages or anything right now. Just this is a very common way to set up your sequence, right, where I'm going to autofocus throughout the evening based on HFR changes, as well as if I have a filter change. And don't forget about dithering. I want to dither. Um, I get better overall stacked images when I dither. If I want to drizzle, it's a requirement. So I'm going to go ahead and dither, and I'm going to dither in this case every three frames, uh, just for this example. Now, it's important to understand at this point, basically, we have eight hours of imaging, we have autofocus runs and meridian flips that are going to occur, and we have dithering that'll occur. Now, autofocus runs can take anywhere from maybe a minute and a half to two minutes each, and dithering 15 to 20 seconds each, right? So we'll, we'll just stick with uh, two minutes for focus runs and 15 seconds for dithering. Okay, but what's the problem here? Well, how many of us have set up a sequence like this and said, well, I'll take eight hours plus some of the extra time, I'll be fine. And then you wake up in the morning and you have 120 luminance, 120 red, 120 green, and 18 blue because you ran out of time, right? So one of the things I see a lot of people do is cut back on the total number of each image and then duplicate it. So they cycle through their filters twice. So rather than doing 120 of each, I'm going to do 60 of each LRGB, and then I'm going to loop back through and do 60L, 60R, 60G, 60B. And again, I'm still going to get my 120. And if I run out of time, at least I've got a more even uh, dispersion of images per filter, right? Um, so again, this is pretty common. I see people do this a lot. Now, the problem with this is we're changing filters more frequently, which means more autofocus runs, which means more time dedicated to the maintenance of our cycle than to the actual imaging. Uh, we only have so many dark hours available to us and we want to be as efficient as possible with that time. So again, we framed up a very simple, basic single target where we're gonna cycle through twice and get 120 images per filter. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into the advanced sequencer and build out a very similar sequence. Um, and I'm going to start very basic to sort of replicate the original sequence you saw in the basic sequencer. And then I'm going to show you some tricks and some things you should be doing because we now have available to us the advanced sequencer. So first I'm going to start with a smart exposure, 120 60 second light frames. 
of the luminance filter dithering every three. Now I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that out a couple times so that we can then get our red, green, and blue filters in place. And again, we're still dithering every three. We've got a total of 120. Now, we still need to add in our autofocus. So we'll add that as a trigger in the advanced sequencer. So we're gonna autofocus after any filter change. And I also wanna add a trigger for autofocusing on HFR increases. So we've got our autofocus covered, we've got our 120 of each filter covered, and we've got our dithering occurring, um, same as we did in our basic sequence. So now, we still could run into the problem of the time gremlins where we just lose a ton of time to the meridian flips, to autofocus, to who knows what throughout the night. And we just feel like we're gonna wake up in the morning and we're gonna have our L, our R, our G, and we're gonna somehow not have 120 blue. We'll have 18 blue for some reason. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split these up and cycle through twice, again, just to mimic what you may do in your basic sequence. So we'll just drop these down to 60 each. And you'll notice we're going to go LRGB, 60 each, and then LRGB, 60 each. Now we've picked up a bunch more autofocus, again, that we have to deal with. The dithering fundamentally is the same because we're still dithering every three images. But all of this adds up, right? So let's do a little math here and talk about our original sequence that we currently have. We're trying to take 120 each of LRG and B, 60 second exposures. Now this is a total of eight hours maybe, right? We've all been there where we just set a number, we try to do the math, but then meridian flips and then autofocus and a whole bunch of other stuff happens. And as a result, you know, we end up with 120 LRG and 22 blue, right? And then we really can't finish our picture until we capture more blue channel. So this is one issue we want to hopefully avoid by moving to the advanced sequencer. So now let's talk a little bit about costs. So the first cost is autofocus. Throughout the evening, we're going to focus on filter changes, and there's three of those, right? So we're not going to count the original focus for the first luminance channel because you always have to start the evening with an autofocus. But we do have an autofocus when we switch to red and then green and then blue. So there's at least three. Now, if we divide our imaging up into two batches of 60 each, so LRGB, LRGB, and cycle through twice, we actually end up with seven autofocuses, right? So we have the original we won't count, and then we switch to RGB, there's three, and then LRGB, there's another four. So a total of seven. Another time we're gonna autofocus is on HFR change. The reality is there's nothing we can do about that. That's all about scene conditions, so we won't count that one. Another cost we do have, though, is related to dithering, right? And we've said we're going to dither every three images, which is a total of 160 times through our 480 images because we're dithering every three images. So you can see that between autofocus and dithering, we're losing a lot of potential imaging time. So let's see what we can do within the advanced sequencer of 1.11 to gain that time back and turn that time into images. First thing is leveraging loops. So in this case, we're gonna leverage a loop until time. And loop until time lets us pick specific times or be a little bit smart based on our location. And we're gonna loop until our local nautical dawn. And you can use astronomical dawn if you want. I'm gonna use nautical dawn here. You can also add multiple looping options. In this case, I'm gonna add loop while altitude above horizon. So now, if either of these cases match, I'll drop out of my loop. So if I hit nautical dawn first, or if my target drops below my horizon line, I will stop processing everything in this loop and move on to any further instructions in this sequence. So now because I have a loop, I don't need to have this replicated twice, right? I just need to go through LRGB once because after I complete that, the loop is gonna have it go back to the top and process LRGB again. Now I'm gonna show you how you can save even more time in your sequence. I'm going to remove the dithers from the smart exposure instruction, and I'm gonna add a separate dither instruction to the bottom of the smart exposures. And this is gonna save me time because now what I can do is I can go to my smart exposures and say, you know what, let's just take a couple of these, three at a time, and I'm gonna take three luminance, three red, three green, three blue, then I'm going to dither. And let's think about what this means for a minute. This is interesting because I'm still dithering every three luminance. I'm still dithering every three red. I'm still dithering every three green, every three blue. 
But the way I've structured this, rather than now dithering every three total exposures, I'm dithering every 12 exposures. I've cut my dithers down to 25% of what they were before, and I've gained back all of that time associated with dithers that now I can use for exposing additional images that I would not have been able to take before because of that time that was lost to dithering previously. Okay, so another way to save some time is we're going to remove the autofocus after filter change. If you remember in a previous video, I showed you how to set filter offsets. And filter offsets allow me to go between filters without the need for an autofocus. So here's my autofocus filter settings. You can see the filter offsets are here. Once those are set, you also need to go all the way up top and make sure you turn on use filter offsets, right? So make sure that's enabled and that will allow Nina to use that table. Now, because of this, I am no longer required to autofocus as I move between luminance in red and green and blue. I'll still autofocus on my HFR increases if it becomes a requirement based on seeing conditions, etc. But generally speaking, now I can cycle through three at a time. And as I move between filters, I don't need to autofocus. Let me show you another way you can even save a little more time on top of this. I can add a parallel instruction set and move the dither into that. You can see I'm also adding a switch filter command into that parallel instruction set. So while I'm dithering, I'm also going to be switching filter at the same time. And notice I set it to luminance because that's the next filter I need as I cycle back to the top of the loop. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do three luminance images, three red, three green, three blue. Then at the same time, I'm going to dither and switch my filter to luminance. That way when I exit my dither, which could be 15 to 20 seconds or more, and I come back to the top of the loop, I'm already on luminance and taking pictures. Now, this may only save you a few seconds, anywhere from two seconds to five seconds, but again, that time does add up throughout the evening. And since we're in time-saving mode, I'm going to show you another way to save even a little bit more time. Notice I have backlash compensation configured. Because I have backlash compensation configured, that means every time I change direction on my focuser, I may have to apply backlash compensation, which can take a little bit of time, right? It means I'm moving in one direction, then I have to move back in the other direction, etc. So what I can do for this LRGB sequence is I can look at my filter offsets and notice I have 41 here for B, I have 11 for G, negative 12 for R, and my luminance is set to zero. If I order those from the highest offset to the lowest, I can put them in that order here in my sequence because as I'm moving then from B to G to L to R, I keep my focuser moving in the same direction, which means my autofocus backlash compensation method configured in Nina doesn't need to kick in, which means less focuser movement and more time conserved for imaging. By structuring our sequence to make sure that our focuser is constantly moving in the same direction, we've saved a little bit of time, right? Also notice that my switch filter command at the bottom, I changed that to blue to match the blue at the top. That becomes important because I wanna make sure that whatever my top command is in my sequence is also the one that I'm changing it to while I dither so that I'm prepared for that next image. Okay, so what if it was narrow band and it was SHO? Just to show you that example, well, I'll get rid of one of these filters. And before we set our filter order, again, let's go back and see our offset definitions so that we can put them in order from the, uh, the biggest number to the smallest, right? So our largest here is our oxygen at negative 87, then we start going left, right? We start going further negative. So starting with O3, then HA, then S2, we continue to move further left and lower on the number line. So here in our sequence, we'll put them in that order, first O3, then HA, then S2, and make sure we change the switch filter command to match the top filter in the list so that while the dither occurs, we're switching back. From a sequence perspective, one other thing to mention here, um, while I change these to 300 second subs because they're narrow band and I want five minute subs, is that if you are going after LRGB or SHO, you may want more subs of one type than another. So with LRGB, 
you may want more luminance. With SHO, you may want more hydrogen alpha. So to do that, uh, one of the easy ways to do that is to just simply go into your sequence and just add more HA subs, right? So here I'm going to take a single O3, then two back-to-back -back HA subs, and then finally an S2, and then I'm going to do my dither and switch my filter back to O3, and then I'll cycle back around, and I'll do this all night long. So let's recap, right? Let's think about what we did here. So moving to the advanced sequencer in 1.11 allowed us to accomplish a couple things. One, we introduced smart looping conditions that let us image for as long as our target was available based on the darkness of the skies as well as our horizon line. By introducing filter offsets, we are able to eliminate multiple autofocus runs, right, when the filters change. So I estimated those at about two minutes each. Sometimes they're shorter, but when you factor in the fact that you may end up with a failed autofocus run that needs to rerun, two minutes is pretty fair. So seven times two in this case was 14 minutes saved from our original sequence. From a dithering perspective, by batching our filters into a loop and adding the dither at the end, we were able to take our dithering down from 160 dithers required originally down to just 40. And at about 15 seconds each, and you actually may have more dithering time than that, that's about 30 minutes saved. So that's a big win for us on a number of fronts, right? We can keep taking pictures until we can't. We're not gonna wake up without a blue channel. We say 44 minutes we can use for additional imaging, and it could be even more than that, depending on how frequently you dither in autofocus. But the real big win for some of you might just be no more math, right? Let the loops figure that out for us. Stop worrying about how long your sequence is going to be, and just take pictures until you can't. And make efficient use of your limited clear, dark skies.